Hello and welcome to Outrun the Fog Sapphire Division. Today up for you, we have the Emissary versus Jormungandr. My name is Tony Big Blind and I will be the caster for this uh, nice match here today. Up, up first, we have Emissary on the Demo Gorgon on Cold Tower 1. Uh, we got the Sponge playing the demo, and we're just looking around, patrolling the middle of the map to see if we can spot out any survivors trying to get to these unblocked generators, thanks to our perk Corrupt Intervention to block the three furthest away generators from wherever we spawned. Gonna keep looking around here, not really able to spot out anybody. Just gonna place a portal in this little window gym and then teleport back to where most of the generators are. Survivors are playing out the stealth game right now. About one full minute has elapsed for the corrupt intervention. One more and those gens become unblocked. So we'll see if our demo is able to find anybody by then or if the survivors are just going to keep stealthing out this corrupt. It does seem like we have some progression over at this generator log and we do see the scratch marks running back towards Shaq. Going to try to play some mind games around the window. We get very close but no drop of the Shaq pallet just yet. Oh we don't land the hit through the window though. Just barely the survivor is able to dodge that. And another near miss through the window. Now, crucially, we have no chase perks on our demo. Usually you might see some sort of bamboozle, but none of that today. Instead, we're going with pain res and pop, which are both generator slowdown perks, which I'll explain in a bit. And then we have no end for the end game. We do catch out the ace here at the four lane, not able to get the hit across the pallet. Instead, we're just going to end up breaking that uh, pallet. We do get the hit onto Ace because we don't have another tile to run to. But we're going to get the balanced landing off, and we're going to make it all the way back to Shaq. But we get down through the window. An excellent hit there for Sponge. I don't think anybody is even close to getting this pallet save, but as we were flicking through the survivors there, we did see two generators very close to completion. You see a body block coming in, probably just to try and stop the pain res from coming off before these gens get completed. An interesting decision, nonetheless. Uh, the pain res comes through anyways, but that other generator was ready to get completed. So that's the first generator done for Jormungandr. One more generator is surely about to get completed on the other side of the map. Try to lunge for the Atom here, but we get Pallet stunned at the Shack. We get Shack Pallet out of the way now. We're just gonna continue the chase towards the main side of the map. But no, we uh, spot out the Renato instead, and we just decide we'd rather hop onto that chase. Now, crucially, the unhook does come through onto the Ace, and instead, actually, we are just gonna go ahead and tunnel out the Ace. We get the pallet stun. Perfect timing from Ace. Uh, not to let that pallet go to waste. We are, though, chasing into the active generators. And the Ace goes down. Another nice lunge from Sponge here. That is the second generator completed. And it seems like Renato is going to be healing back up the Atom. Gonna be taking this hook on top of the hill just to see if we can camp this along with the surrounding generators. That is a really good hook for Sponge. I guess I should explain some of these perks now. Pain Res makes it so the first time you hook each survivor on a Scourge hook, 25% off the most active generator, and I'll explain the other one after the, this exciting tunnel out onto Ace. Just going to be running as far away from the active generators as possible. But our demo is going to try and uh, force them back in that direction, not allowing them to get any distance away. I'm trying to play around this car pallet. A oh, perfect dodge! Oh my gosh! Beautifully played by Ace. Oh, but gets hit through the pallet, not able to drop it in time. It goes down for it. Seems like we did have a survivor setting themselves up. For the, uh, for the pallet save there, but just not able to get in time. 
All right, now we have the first kill at three generators remaining. This is absolutely incredible for Sponge here. Putting on a great performance on the demo so far. We're getting fairly early tunnel out, and we spot our next chase at this window gym onto the Atom. Try to play some mind games, look like it worked, and that should be the first tag on an Atom here. Be running towards the main side of the map. Oh, we get hit through the window, not able to make it anywhere. However, the third generator on the side of Jormungandr does get completed in the meantime. We are going to get a crucial use of both Pain Res and Pop Goes the Weasel. Pop Goes the Weasel, let's, uh, after we hook a survivor, our next kick reduces the generator by 30% of its current progress. Uh, so, we've been kicking this generator at logs a bunch, so we decide to kick the gen over near where we hooked the survivor. At this point, it seems like our Demogorgon probably does not care about the main gen, is just satisfied with trying to hold the other three generators. Oh no, never mind, we are going to go up into the main building. Don't want to give away the gen for free, we spot out the Renato, but we're just going to drop the chase and head back to hook to make sure no free unhook occurs. Probably just going to try and camp this out to second stage at this point. They've been sat on this hook for a very long time. Only a couple more seconds until we are probably going to go back out on the prowl and check our gens once again. Not a lot of use out of these uh, Demogorgon portals so far, I have to say. Probably could have been setting some of these up across, uh, you know, along the sides of the map. You do see the Renato drop off a of main and go for the save. You do get the unhook. And now it's just a matter of who we decide to go for. Most likely, we're going to be going for the Atom here. Just because the second kill of the game. Atom tries to get Sponge to go for the swing, but Sponge does not fall for it. Appropriately waits out the BT. There is now only one generator remaining that, em er, that Jormungandr needs to complete in order to start attempting to escape from the trial. Gonna go ahead and pop this main generator. Definitely the gen with the most progress. Fortunately for our Demogorgon, we do have a very large gen spread. You know, we got main and we got this generator pretty much right next to Shaq. It's about as bad as it comes in trying to hold generators, but we spot out the blood from the Renato, and we're gonna have a super fast chase. There's just nothing for a Renato to play around. So now it's just a matter of trying to find the Ada and put them down on the ground. Doesn't seem like uh, Sponge wants any sort of that, of the slugging game though, and so we're just gonna hook uh, the Renato on to this hook and then attempt to find the Ada during this kill countdown. Uh, this does open the possibilities of a hatch play, you know, if uh, they are, if, or an escape from the trial, if these survivors play this, you know, pretty perfectly. We'll have to see how it ends up getting played, but we do see the Ada walking around the main building and that's kind of where our Demogorgon is looking. Super close, and looks like the Ada has been spotted out by Sponge. It's just a matter of getting this final chase down. That is the first hit onto Ada. Going to be running into this jungle gym. We make the window, though. Demo trying to shred through to see if they were camping the pallet, but no, we have no one camping the pallet today. Going to be running back through to the tile. We're going to run right past it. We're going into main instead. We should get this fall for free. I don't know... Yeah, we got pretty far away from Sponge there. I don't really know. All right, it seems like Sponge broke that door. Maybe earlier, actually. I don't know when that door got broken, but... Ada putting on an excellent chase here. Not that it really matters in the end game. Honestly, all that they could do is hope the Renato uh, dies on hook at this point, and then Ada runs to and makes it to the hatch at Shaq first. That's probably the best thing that... Uh, that uh, uh, your Megander can hope at this point. Oh, a nice fake, though, from Sponge to get Ada to dodge out of the way and lose a bunch of distance. 
So well done there by Sponge, securing themselves a 4k1. Four kills with one generator, generator remaining. We will just have to wait for the remaining survivors to actually die on these hooks for the game to end, but no no second chance perks allowed against the Demogorgon, so I'm not going to be seeing any self-unhooks or self-pickups or anything. And there it is, the 4k1 in the bag for... for this is Emissary killing, right? I'm not going insane? I might be going insane. I'm probably... No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. This is Emissary. All right. Good job to Emissary, and we'll have to see if Jormungandr's Demogorgon can keep up with that wind condition uh, when we come back in a couple minutes. And we're back with Jormungandr versus Emissary, set number one, game number two. We just watched Emissary on the Demogorgon secure a four kills with one generator remaining. Uh, and so Jormungandr, in order to win the set, is going to need to get four kills at two generators remaining. And on the side of Emissary, all they have to do is complete all five generators. You know, sounds simple enough to me. It's just a matter of how well Finesse is going to be able to stop them from doing just that. You would spot an extremely early chase onto the Claudette here. At this four lane, gonna catch the vault through the window, but then just run around to a hill. All that does look like have no no balance landing. So we're just gonna take the hit there and gonna have in, to keep running to the shack. In terms of uh, exhaustion perks from our Claudette, we do have you know smash hit and what seems like head on, though. So, Really gonna be situational whether we're gonna use that of those perks. Not able to get the lunge through the window though, our Claudette just being able to make it through that. Gets the fast vault onto the gym. Probably gonna have to drop the pallet here. Yep. Take the shred. Probably gonna run back to the shack window. We'll be running on the outside of shack though. Oh yeah, we definitely make shack pallet here. Get the drop onto that. Get the immediate shred. You know, Claudette doing an incredible job. I guess this is Sponge here. Sponge doing an incredible job in this chase against the killer that they just played as. They get back to the window. Man, Finesse just not able to get a hold of this Claudette. We are breaking a bunch of pallets bottom side, though, so any chase that comes here in the future, you know, is going to have a really tough time doing what Sponge is doing right now. Seems like we finally ran out of resources to use, so we're just running around the edge map and eventually just gonna die there. There it is. Gonna have to see how many gens, if any, end up getting completed for all that time spent chasing Sponge, though. I have to imagine at least one. Yep, there it is. At least one. Two generators. Are we gonna see three? No, it seems like the pain res probably comes in time. Or there were only doing two generators. Not sure which, but we did see our first use of Pain Res. And now we're going to be seeing our first application of Pop Goes the Weasel. And our first application of a new perk we have not seen yet today, Eruption. Eruption makes it so that uh, when we get somebody down for any generators that we've kicked, 10% uh, gets taken off of that generator. But, in the meantime, the unhook does come through onto the Claudette. So now it's just a question. We are going to tunnel out the Claudette. The only sensible option. Now the two generators have been completed. we got to get a lot of value with these quick chases. We do get a super fast down. But Nancy is here for the pallet save. Is not able to confirm the down. Going to end up having to play around the eye tile. You can't really play around the eye tile. You're just going to have to break the eye tile. And we shred it. And now we're running right back to Shaq. Sponge doing an incredible job here before. We're going to see if Sponge can keep it up this time. We're going around to the nothing side of Shaq. This does seem like we're going to be able to get this hit this time. And a beautiful fake shred there. Into the window fake from Sponge. But just going to go down. However, three generators three and four get completed in the meantime, 
This is absolutely incredible for Emissary here. You know, this is already, at the very least, the tie condition met for Emissary. All they have to do is complete one more generator, and that will be the win con for Emissary on the demo set. Go ahead and teleport onto the main side of the map and pop the generator. A super fast unhook coming in, and the For the People getting used up as well so that Claudette does not get tunneled out of the game. As quickly, I guess I should say. Not able to get the hit onto the Nancy that might have been balanced landing. Nancy's able to make it back to the window, and we're just going to be chasing around May. Not really much to play around, so we take the hit there. Could have gone to the pallet behind May, but none of that happened. We're just going to be placing down a portal, taking that first hit, and teleporting back. Going to see if we can spot out maybe the injured. Maybe... The in other injured survivor or possibly the Claudette. But main thing is we got to keep these generators on lock. Jormungandr lets another generator get completed. That will be it for the demo set. The uh, survivors do have a pretty good gen spread. We do catch out Jeffrey here. Just barely not able to get the shred around the corner. And we get the fast fall through the window. With the swing, so no down there. Jeffrey doing an incredible job of working with, you know, what little that they have while injured. Just trying to waste as much time. Going to be running into the corner so that they can die there. That is eruption applied to two of those generators, though. Will Emissary be able to complete that last generator before Demo can go over to one of them and pop it is the real question. We're going to be teleporting back to that generator around main. Doesn't even seem like it has that much progress. Maybe they've been working on the middle of the map generator. You would expect this to have uh, more pro. It seems like it has maybe 50%. Again, with a really fast unhook, though, onto Jeffrey. Just going to be teleporting right back to see if we can spot where they went for another fast down, another fast pop. Key note there, that hook onto Jeffrey was not a pain residence hook. My guess is just no pain res hooks in the vicinity. We do spot out the ace, however. And so we're going to be chasing around this gym. We get the nice shred next to the car, and we're just going to keep our chase around the main building. At this point, Ace vaults through the window. Probably going to see the Demogorgon. No, Demogorgon's going to have to leave the chase, and we find Jeffrey, I think. Pretty sure we fought a Jeffrey and got the answer there, if I saw the HUD correctly. But, nonetheless, we kind of just have to keep running. You know, the gens are really our top priority for uh, Mr. Demo here. But we spot out an attempted body block. It's gonna we're gonna see if your beginner is gonna be able to get around it. No, just gonna have to respect the body block and give the hit. We go down in the corner, but our survivors weren't even working gens, they were just resetting. So we should be able to get a pain res hook. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, we should be able to get a pain res hook here. We set the progress on most of these generators. Gonna be hopping back into the underworld portal. Going to the other side of main, just seeing if we spot any survivors. We do see the Nancy on the other side of main. We vault the window. Not really much is gonna come out of this chase. The Nancy does pre-drop the car, pal. We're just gonna shred right through it. As we start heading back towards where the unhook just occurred. Interesting enough, uh, you know, the Claude Sponge here on the only survivor on Deathhook, if I'm if I remember correctly, doing an incredible job at just not being spotted the rest of this game. Or this, you know, we have not seen them since we got the second hook onto them. So the survivor's doing an excellent job at protecting Sponge from getting tunneled out. Unfortunately, though, every other injured, every other survivor is now injured because of it, and we're just gonna take chase onto the Nancy around this jungle gym. Nothing really comes out of it though, because of this very good dead zone that our Demogorgon is gonna be able to play around for the rest of the game. 
Should be another pain res and another pop goes the weasel. Again, it's really just making sure. Oh, but the final generator gets completed. Our Demogorgon was not able to keep control of all the generators. And that is the win condition met for Emissary. Well done. You know, the Claudette must have been just chugging away at that generator in the middle there. We finally spot out the Claudette, although in the end game they are only now worth one hook stage, so it probably isn't even a very worthwhile chase to go after. You might as well just camp your fresh hook survivor to death. Just for the best result possible. But a, a, a great showing by, uh, by Emissary these past two games. 4k1 and then ending up this one with the what seems like six hook stages in the end so you know in this next set in this upcoming clown set you know we're gonna need to see Gander step up their game the clown set is their pick though okay sorry seven hook stages All right the clown set is Gander's pick so we'll see if this if that killer uh does any better for them uh when we come back momentarily And we are back with Outrun the Fog's Sapphire Division. My name is Tony Big Blind casting this match for you. Today we have, or today we still have, uh, set number two of game number one of Jormungandr versus Emissary. Jormungandr currently on the clown. On the Blood Lodge. We did just watch Emissary take set number one, which was Demogorgon on Cold Tower, so we'll have to see if Jormungandr can fire back with their pick of killer. We get a beautiful tag through the window at the fun bus. She's gonna be trying to throw some purple bottles just to slow the ace down. The ace is definitely still making it to that shack pallet. Gonna pre-drop the shack pallet and keep running. No reason not to. Right, chuck another bottle here. Maybe try to play around this set of pallets. We'll have to see if our killer has seen the clown guy. Not able to make the the hit across the pallet there. Just gonna have to break it and keep chasing. Ace able to make it to the next filler of the God Rock. We're gonna have to see how much we can make of it. Doesn't seem like our survivors want anything to do with it though. And just go in for the body block. Our clown, instead of continuing to chase the ace, instead decides to go after ne Nia. But the first generator gets popped in the distance. Emissary not slowing down for anything. First generator gets completed and only two injuries to show for it. In terms of perks, the only difference in perks we've seen so far today is now Brutal Strength. Which just allows us to kick the generators faster and break doors faster and break pallets faster. Most important part. We're gonna catch out the Claudette here. Gonna land a purple bottle directly on top of their head, but it won't really matter for trying to make it to this pallet. Gonna catch them back at the God Rock here. We land another purple bottle, but our Claudette is just gonna keep making it from tile to tile here. Not really impeded at all by these purple bottles. This might even... Okay, yeah, that is a hit. I was curious if it was still going to be a hit if they had made it to the window. But we do also spot out where the Ace and the Nia were resetting. So really, you know, unfortunate there that our Claudette brought us right to that reset. Another purple bottle. We're going to be chase taking Chase back onto the fun buses. That should be our first down. Oh my, it was just barely our first down with that head on. Oh man. Great job by our killer being able to secure that down right before the head on comes in. This should be our first pain res of the game as well. There it is. Pain res still knocking off 25% of the most active generator. Go ahead and take a nice little kick at this gen. We do see some survivor on the hill that just dropped off. Probably just going to take chase onto them. Although it might just be a better idea to camp out the hook for now. No real reason to leave the hook at the current moment. 
We might see some other generators on the opposite side of the map get completed for it, but trying to get somebody out of the game as early as possible is always a good idea. Just like I mentioned, there is the second generator getting completed. Now, it is really hard for the survivor to camp out uh, this hook. We do get a nice hit onto the ace, though, but that should mean the unhook on the side of Emissary here. There it is. Now it's just a matter of trying to confirm the tunnel out onto the Claudette. Claudette going into the main building should make the window fairly easily. We land them direct head on with the purple bottle. And that should just be a down right here. We're just trying to wait out any additional borrowed time. Base kit borrowed time. That is still with us. Just going to take the pick up and put him right back onto the hook. At this point, our 3-gen setup is going to be on this kind of the other side of the main building compared to our Claudette. So it might have been a better idea to take them into this section. But in the end, we are able to spot out Jeffrey. And the third generator gets completed. Jeffrey just barely able to make it across this pallet, which finally gets broken by our clown. Jeffrey going to be able to make this pallet in the gym. Gets tagged across it, though. Not able to play out that mind game this time around. Claudette does get unhooked. And for the people coming through from the Nea to make sure this Claudette does not, uh, does not get tunneled out anytime soon. That will, build, that will still be our clown's top priority, though, if we can find the Claudette is going to be to get them out of the game. We are going to be chasing around the fun buses. I think that is our Claudette that we were able to spot out around the fun buses here. It is. We're going to be able to make the pallet, though. And going to be breaking the pallet on what I would maybe say is the wrong side. Our Claudette not using it to take distance, though. Just deciding to stay around the fun buses. You know, ideally, the Claudette would want to, would want to run to the opposite side of the map. Oh, a swing and a miss to the window fake. Not able to connect the knife there. It's just going to extend this chase that much longer. And I think with how long this chase has been going on, Emissary is going to have no downsides to completing these last two gens. The head-on play coming out of absolutely nowhere. I think the only thing our clown can really hope for at this point is that Noed is going to come in majorly clutch in this endgame. This fun bus is just so strong, though, with this middle window here. Our clown just not able to get any value off of chasing. There's the fourth generator completed, and I can't imagine the fifth is not close by. Clown finally choosing to drop the chase with the Claudette to check up on our generators. We do see a ton of progress on this gen in the corner of the map and we check one survivor running away from it we're going to set up a purple bottle ace is just going to run right past the rock though and continue on to the tile in the corner yet again we're taking this chase super far away on on a non-injured survivor into where our gens really aren't so this might not be the best chase ideally these survivors of emissary are just going to be able to complete the remaining generator in time and there it is, the generator does get completed. And unfortunately for our clown, that will mean that no way is revealed. You know, on an injured survivor. Uh, fortunately, that is a fresh hook, so that will be three more stages if we just choose to camp that one out. Although we are going to be searching around for more. We do a spot. I'm pretty sure that was the Claudette because they were fully healthy. In the end game here, the Noed not really doing much since the two survivors we really want to find are both injured already. But the haste is pretty nice. But it seems like the other survivors are just going to go ahead and leave the trial. No real reason to stay. And that will be five hook stages for Jorman Gander's clown. So that means that uh, five hook stages with two of those being fresh hooks that... Emissary's clown will basically most likely need to get uh, six hook stages total 
They could also get five hook stages as long as three or more of them are fresh, and that would be both the set and the match win if Emissary is able to secure that, which we will find out here shortly. See you then. Okay, we are back for set number two, game number two of Yormagandan versus Emissary. <laughs> so, we have Emissary up on the killer, and just as a reminder, Yormagandan got five stages with two of those being fresh hooks. So all Emissary's killer has to do is get either five hook stages with three, be with three fresh hooks or just get six stages to confirm both the set and the match win for the side of Emissary as our clan. We do have Dave, and we get a really early chase with the Renato here. Able to hit a nice purple bottle, and then call it up for a really good first tag. And use the Bamboozle here on the window. Oh, we got the perfect mind game, too. That was so beautifully played. And we're going to go ahead and get our first hook immediately of five generators remaining, not giving our survivors any chance to complete any generators yet. Well, that is our corrupt intervention over, but for our other three perks, we do have two perks here. We have not seen yet today. We have Sloppy Butcher that makes any time we attack us, we hit a survivor. Uh, it's going to be much harder for them to heal back up. And then we have Bamboozle making it whenever we vault a window to block that window. The, the mind games from from Dave here are just going crazy. Just hitting him with the bottle and then trying to juke him out, getting him away from the pallet. Chasing around with this ace, we do drop one pallet and get the break. We're gonna chase him all the way into this corner and see how well Ace could play around the four lane here. Drops the pallet, and I think that should be the down. Yeah, that's the down. The unhook does, and the reset does come through onto the Renato, but this is looking really good for Dave. Now, crucially, what we aren't seeing from Dave is any gen regression, so if our survivors can, you know, pick up the pace on these generators and uh, get these chases to last a little longer, this game could definitely still turn around. And that is the first generator getting completed on the side of Yormagander. Gonna go ahead and break the door that leads into main building and then give a kick on the generator. You can see someone going in for the save. We try to chuck a bottle, bottle to the land. We're just gonna go right back after the ace. We're gonna get the hit. Looks like that was both hit speed and possibly a balanced landing from the ace. We're gonna be chasing around what I want us to call a forklift, but I don't think it's a forklift. Gonna call it a truck. Gonna drop the pallet at the truck. Gonna try to do some fancy mind games. Not really able to play around it, though. Gonna just have to break it and then keep holding W. Ace goes down through a pallet, though. Oh, no. That is not what Gander needs right now. But two more generators getting completed? Okay, okay. That is now the third hook stage for Emissary. Three more hook stages, and that will be the set and match win. Again, Yormagander just has to keep up the pace with these generators and then be extremely wary of Noed in the endgame. Because at this point, all, uh... All we need from Emissary is to wait for Endgame, get down one of our fresh hooks, and then just camp them into uh, into oblivion. My god, we get another hit through the pallet. It's just it's just it's just picture perfect there for Dave. Maybe chucking a lot of bottles, just trying to slow down the survivor, and we slow him down just enough to get the lunge to the window. Nice one. The unhook does come in onto the ace. Maybe we'll see a for the people, but maybe this person that we just have in our arms is the for the people player. Or maybe it's the ace themselves. Who knows? But no for the people comes through. Ideally, you want to see at least a reset just so this survivor uh, does not have to worry uh, about 
going down instantly anymore. Did we spot a survivor around this rock? Nope, nope, no survivor there. But that will be our third fresh hook. So crucially, if we get one more stage here from Dave, uh, that will be the end of this set and the match. The fourth generator getting completed on the side of Jormungandr. It's going to be go patrolling the final three generators as well as the hook. You see the scratch marks on to Ada. Ada's going to have to put on an incredible chase. Go into this logger truck, though. It takes the first hit. We're going to have to find somewhere safe to play around if we want this game to go on for any longer. Going to take another purple bottle to the face, but we're going to be able to make this pallet. Going to be playing the mind games. Get hit across the pallet. Dave has just been winning so many of these mind games. It's been incredible. And that will be the fifth hook stage for Dave. Which will secure both the set and the match with, like I've been saying, this entire, this entire game repeatedly for Emissary. Now it's just a matter of how well can Jormungandr finish and Emissary finish this game just for the style points. You see, we do hear a generator with a lot of progress as we go to chase Renato around the window gym. The final generator does get completed, but that also means that no end is going to come through. Not able to get through that pallet. Not able to get the hit through the pallet this time. But Renato is not very fast and will just take the down through the locker. Definitely an interesting decision just to make sure that the clown could not slug. Uh, not even confirmed no end, but... Probably just going to assume no Ed. There's really no reason not to. And at this point, that is now six stages. Just cementing in the victory for Emissary. And I assume the other survivors are just going to take their leave as seven stages uh, end up getting confirmed for the side of Emissary. So that means Emissary wins the set and match. GG's to both teams for playing uh this this match here today and nice job to emissary to take it home just as a reminder later tonight we do have one more match for all of you uh at 8 p.m est in just another hour from now we have chaos versus prism which i will also be casting so make sure to join us then uh, but for now we'll see you later